located smack in the middle of the San Juan Mountains, the Alpine Loop connects Lake City with the town of Silverton and the town of Uray, with two passes, to the north being Engineer Pass and to the south being Cinnamon Pass. Our adventure starts in Lake City, one of the cool towns here in Colorado. Not as picturesque as Uray and not as popular as Silverton, but it has its own charm. So we're going to start off with $6 a gallon fuel because you're out in the middle of nowhere and there's only one gas station. Uh, but that's okay because when you're here, you can also get some good Texas barbecue apparently. to eat at the Packer Saloon maybe. How does Packer Saloon look to you? Looks good to me. I'm trying to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> couple of miles outside of Lake City, you're going to run into San Cristobal Lake, which is a very beautiful, picturesque lake. Lots of cabins around it and also lots of campsites that you can get a giant RV into. So there's a lot of traffic on this road from all types of vehicles. Now, if this isn't your jam and you want to get into public lands and uh, the backcountry a little bit, you just scoot on past this lake right here. And once you get a little bit further, you're going to get into a more picturesque more private area. The first thing you need to know before coming up here is that there's going to be a lot of traffic. This is a scenic byway, so cars that are two-wheel drive can come on this road as well. The road to Silverton is not at all bad. It's basically a dirt road. Now if you take Poughkeepsie Gulch to Uray, that that is going to be a little bit harder. So we're not going to do that route just because we we don't want to end up in your ray. It's a little bit further distance from where we live. Uh, so we're just going to do the loop and show you the loop. And this is the loop. It's beautiful. It's a great place, yeah. Once you get away from uh, San Cristobal Lake, it gets much better. Even though it's just a dirt road at this point, it's it can get washboardy and stuff, so we're gonna go ahead and let some air out of the tires. The Bronco way, which is using your gauges to do the work. So we'll get here, off-road, tire pressure, and now we're gonna let out some air. Twenty-five, let's go. a 15 minute drive in from Lake City. You finally get to public lands. There's a lot of private land between Lake City and this point. Uh, but from here on in, for the most part, it is public land. So we're gonna try to find a stream and throw a rod. Whew, man, this is beautiful. You ready for public lands? Of course I am. And then down in the valley there is Sherman. That's the like the first major kind of uh, viewpoint that you get. It was a town built in the 1800s that was destroyed by flood. Obviously, there's a lot of water coming through here and uh, they tried to build a dam, harness the water, it didn't work. And now it's a historic site. So uh, you can go down there and you can see the rounded stones and the ruins down there. But I don't think we're gonna go down there. We're gonna keep going.
this time of year, normally uh, these mountains have huge waterfalls coming off the top of them, but there's not a lot of water right now. In fact, we just had some rain in here, so this is probably, it's a little bigger than normal, but uh, yeah. These little waterfalls are really neat. The whole route is dotted with waterfalls. Everywhere you look. Alpine Loop, one of the things that is fun is to pull off on the side and there are a lot of little hiking trails that go down to water or they overlook a canyon or there may be a ghost town or I don't know, there's a whole lot of things. Turn the car off. That's not us. You sure? Yes. <laughs> it would have honked. Okay. Yeah, the Bronco would have honked. Remember the honk? Yes. That's why you don't disable the double honk. <laughs> that way you don't leave your car running. Rack is holding up well. Let's see. <laughs> all the way down. See, there's a tree mark all the way down the Bronco, but <laughs> it'll come off. streams like this dot the entire loop and uh, most of it can be accessed. Some of it's on private land, some of it's in canyons. Uh, you're not going to catch big fish in these rivers, but they're super beautiful. Great color, browns, brooks, things like that. Nice fish. said water crossings weren't fun that's like the <laughs> that was like the best thing on this part of the road so far yep. we did it twice just because it was that much fun too much fun again 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 dad let's go in the water So the avalanche came from up there, and then boom, right there.
And it's a big drop off. Hampered by a UTV traffic jam. We're out here on a Monday and a Tuesday and really isn't not that much traffic compared to normal, but uh, today we just happen to get behind this group, which is fine. We've got plenty of time. While we're sitting here, let's take a look at American Basin. stretch of road all the way up to the peak of Cinnamon Pass is nothing short of legendary. Cinnamon Pass, which is uh, one of the more beautiful passes in Colorado, and it's easy to get to. So let me show you around. This section is called the Animus Steps, which takes you down to the ghost town of Animus Forks. So welcome to Animus Forks, the craziest ghost town <laughs> on the route. <laughs> hey, it's hornet's nests. Okay. <laughs> and we're walking. And we're walking. <laughs> oh, it's locked. Somebody's in there. Spooky, spooky. 1879. The Duncan family. You can see the mites and rat, rats have been in here digging oh all this stuff. Gosh, that is so loud. Yes. There's the fireplace right there. Ah! <laughs> Ooh, stairs. You're gonna fall through. I can't imagine how this this house survives uh, winters. Mouse turds everywhere. I, I hear on the windows. 
So this is Animus Forks. It is a ghost town from 1870. I can't imagine how a house like that will withstand the amount of snow load that they get here. I mean, this is like 10 feet of snow. As a base down here, I don't have any idea how that thing is still standing. And, uh, and my deck has to be replaced every five years. That <laughs> <laughs> seems a little weird. So that is the foil packet. Oh, that really smells. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Bears are gonna come. Here, bear. Here, bear. So the foil packet's done and it is on that rock, staying warm. And now we have, we have the New York strip and the cedar planked Atlantic salmon that's in a box. Hey, wait, we'll get flavor. Uh, applewood with orange and ginger. Yeah, baby. Just what the bears like. <laughs> yes. I need a knife for this though, don't I? Or do I just peel it open? Uh, I have a I knife. I think I need a knife. I need to... I'm just gonna pull it out. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, Look at that. You're gonna wish you had to do it. How are you feeling about your steak? Oh, steak? You cannot go over a steak. <laughs> what are you talking about my choice of steak? Oh, no, no juices. <laughs> no juices. Yeah, they're salmon on the ground now. So if you, you don't think that bears love this site, this there is a ton of bear scat all over the place here. Boom. Boom. Right there. Right there. And uh, and we decided to eat salmon. <laughs> A bear's, a bear's favorite food. <laughs> Uh, granola and milk. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the first day on the Alpine Loop? Well, I thought it was great. I think there's a little bit more technical stuff to do. But... Now, today we're going to be doing the Engineer Pass side. We stopped at the Animus Forks Ghost Town, which is about halfway in the loop. And then we're going to take Engineer Pass back to Lake City. And the Engineer Pass part has a lot of waterfalls. It has a lot of, uh, it has an old dam. There's a lot of ghost towns along the way. So we're really looking forward to this today. It's going to be an awesome day. Well, that was actually faster than normal. 15 minutes. Not bad. Piece of cake. Let's go hit the trail.
Day two, engineer pass. It's gonna be a good day. No rain in the forecast. It's just gonna be uh, probably a lot of traffic. So we'll see what we get when we get there. That's the pass all the way up there. Lots of switchbacks, lots of switchbacks. Don't go chasing waterfalls Cause you'll roll off on the cliff that you're next to So if you have a Bronco Jeep may have this too, but if you put it in Baja, it automatically turns on the front screen so that you can see the road in front of you, which makes it really handy, especially on uh, especially on tight switchbacks and stuff like that where you have people passing. You can see that edge a little bit better. And then on top of that, in Baja mode, it turns on four wheel high and it sets it in first gear. You can go up to second gear, you just have to use your manual shifter. That will take you to second gear so that you can uh, do a little bit of faster crawling, I guess you could call it. But you can't go past second gear, not in uh, Baja, not that I've seen. Now in a span of 30 minutes, we managed to completely destroy our DJI drone and we also forgot to hit video on the record button for this section. Now this is the crux of Engineer's Pass. As you can tell, this is a shelf road that runs right along the side of the mountain here. It's a very narrow trail, but you can allow passing right up around this uh, little corner right here. This is where it opens up. One of the best views in the area. Think of that last section of engineers. <laughs> it's tight. <laughs> I, it's okay. I thought we were going up that too. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, at, at one time people did, but they blocked it off. And since then, it's probably got washed out. You can hike up that road. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Get to the top. It could look like you probably have a good view from there. But yeah, engineers pass that last section of engineers pass. It looked like we may have been on photo and not on video, so I don't know how much we got of it, but um, it was tight and steep, probably 35 degrees or maybe even a little bit more than that. It was uh, tight, but it was fun. We didn't get any traffic until we got right to the top where we had some uh, some UTVs come by us there, but we had plenty of room. I mean, this is the top of Engineer's Pass. The rest of it going downhill is going to be moderate, to say the least. Uh, it's going to be a, a lot like the first part of the Alpine Loop. You can see it down here. So for the most part, we're probably back to just dirt roads, but there are a lot of ghost towns and things like that that we're gonna stop by. So hang on, let's keep going. So you'll notice along the, um, along the route, there are these uh, tall sticks right behind us here. And basically they put those up in, just in case if you're out here, uh, especially early, let's say when it opens in late May or right before it closes uh, in the end of fall, 
Uh, they get snowstorms down in here pretty strong, three to five inch an hour snowstorms. And if you're caught up here and you need to get out, that marks the road so you can get out. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you're driving through the tundra and getting yourself into a predicament. So uh, this, you're gonna find these pretty much along the route. Once you get off of Engineer's Pass headed back towards Lake City, it actually stays rocky, but the trail widens a little bit. So uh, there, there are some areas where you're gonna have to pull over for oncoming traffic, but it's not bad. cabin in the woods. So would you refurbish this cabin and live in it? Yeah, but... This is a cool cabin. Perfect size. <laughs> Jump in there. Just watch your feet. Don't step on that wood. There's nails in it. Wow. Hmm? This cabin probably dates back to the Late 1800s, early 1900s. That is a waterfall, my friend. All right, so that is the suspension bridge cabin on Engineers Pass, and you can actually rent that on VRBO or Airbnb or something like that. We tried to look it up, couldn't find it, uh, but it's uh, it'll looks like it'll house like up to like six or eight people. There's a suspension bridge that goes to it. Pretty cool. We're gonna get up a little closer to it and see if we can get some pictures. Take a shower? <laughs> yes. All right, go. <laughs> go do it. <laughs> no, but doesn't that look I'd amazing? That. So if you come here when it's storming, uh, for instance, rain, stuff like that, or in the spring when you get a lot of the runoff, this is what happens on this road a lot. You get landslides that uh, block the road, and a lot of times it'll take a couple of days to get equipment up here to move this. So this looks like when we get up here. tons of gravel that's one of the dangers about being on a pass like this is uh, if you get storms you might get uh, shut down one direction and have to go back out the way you came or wait for them to open up the road again
No, no entry today. No. It's a cute little uh, faux town here. Yeah. It's like a kiln. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, see, it raises up. You put something in it, oh, forge nice. it. Let's see if we can open the kiln here. Over here. Look up here. Look up here. All right, are we back at our favorite place in Lake City? Yes, this time for pizza and salad. Pizza and salad, all right. We're gonna go do pizza and salad at the Packer Saloon. Now, I don't know if it's the best place in Lake City, but uh, it's one of the coolest. You know, if you have a couple of days to do the Alpine Loop, that's the best way to do it. Find a place off-road. Remember, Engineer Pass doesn't have a ton of dispersed camping. Uh, and really, the Cimarron Pass side doesn't either. When you get over to Animus Fork, just to the south of that, there is some dispersed camping. It's only a very short section, but you can disperse camp there. There's also a campground on the way to Silverton if you wanted to do that. So there's also several campgrounds on the way in on Cimarron Pass from Lake City as well. So if you want to do take an RV and then base camp there or something like that, there's a lot of good options there. That's a wrap from Alpine Garage. This is the first in our Colorado Trail Guide series. The next step is going to be, I don't know what, but we're gonna go do something cool. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fall runs this year so you can see the fall foliage in Colorado.